Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you are all safe and healthy and keeping your family safe and healthy. Steve Tannhauser here from the Angus Barn, and we just have a couple of things we want to talk to you about. First of all, if you aren't aware, we are doing takeout. We're doing it seven days a week, and we're available for curbside pickup between four and eight every day of the week. We have a limited menu, but a great menu. You can get your favorite ribeyes, filet mignons, ribs, burgers. We're serving it all up. We're even serving up salmon. So please come by and see us. In addition to that, we're doing ready-to-cook meals that are perfect for the grill. We have three great choices. We have our ribeyes, we have our burgers, and we have our filet mignons that are already bacon wrapped. All three of these are so easy. We age them to perfection, and then we cry about them, take all the oxygen out to stop the aging process, and then flash freeze them. And with that, you can just pull them out of your freezer, put them, let them sit for a couple of hours, or just stick them in warm water, and they are ready to rock and roll on the grill right off the bat. So please come by, call us, and we'll get you all set up with these three great cuts. And right now, once again, I'm going to turn it over to our very talented chef de cuisine, the one and only Scott James. And today, he is going to talk to you about taking these fillets and making this gorgeous steak Diane dish that literally is no more than a five-minute cook. So with that, I'm going to talk and turn it over to Chef Scott. Scott, how are you? Hey, how's everybody doing today? Um, we just wanted to do a real quick dish that you could do at home, something that... Uh, you know, it's a, a, a short prep time and delicious. So, so seven ounce filet, you have the bacon wrap, cut them out of the cryo bag. Um, we pulled them last night, let them sit overnight to thaw out, and then uh, now they're nice and ready to go. We take the bacon off and set that on the side. We take the sevens and cut them in half so we get a nice thin piece that we can cook all the way through in the pan in a short period of time. You can see that. See how quickly those are going to cook through because of how thin they are. Do the same thing over here. Now we got four portions. Set them on our plate like this. Salt and pepper. Make sure you're generous with that. Okay. Get the other side. And then they're ready for our pan. nice and hot, I'm going to say medium heat, try to get something with a heavy bottom, you don't want to use something that's a, a thin pan, you want to make sure that it carries the heat once you put the meat inside the pan actually, we've got a little bit of neutral oil that we're going to sear in, you can see you've got a little smoke right there, you can see the ripples in the oil, that means it's ready to go, we're going to put just a little knob of butter in there so we can brown these steaks really well, I believe we're ready, so we're going to get these beauties in here and ready to go. So I'm thinking about a minute, minute 30 each side should get us a solid medium rare. You want to watch the, you can see the line of the, the meats cooking coming up the side. Uh, that's kind of your gauge there. You want to make sure that you cook them and they have a nice brown on them. That's why we added the butter. The butter's going to actually give a good, nice brown color. Lean that pan forward a little bit just so we can kind of sit that butter a little bit more. I'm give them a little push just so they're flat. Good peak. See, we're getting there. So you can see we've got the nice caramelization on our steaks. We're going to move them to a lifted rack so they're not sitting right on top of something so air can circulate around it and it can rest properly. Generally want to rest meat about a quarter of the time that it took to cook. We're just going to hit them a little bit of our Angus Barn steak seasoning. This is the stuff that makes everything taste like Angus Barn. And you can pick that up in the country store here. Butter and oil. Turn that heat down just a little bit. We'll start working on our sauce. So now 
now we can start with the sauce. First, we're going to go with the shallots. Hot pan. We drained off some of that uh, butter and oil that we had. We're going to get a little white caramelization on those. Bit of sliced garlic. You can see I like to cut it a little bigger just because if uh, somebody doesn't want to consume garlic, it's not always in the sauce. It's not in every bite. You can kind of just put it on the side. So we're going to smear there. And just a touch of butter right now just so we can get all of that stuff going. Add some mushrooms. Want to get a little sear on those and make them pretty. right about now to draw some more of that flavor out, kind of full season as you go. Next we're going to put a tablespoon of mustard. And we want to let that cook a little bit. We want to make sure that we get a little bit of toast on all of this stuff. The mushrooms got a little sear on them. We season them. We've lightly caramelized those onions where we put some heat on them, they start to brown a little bit. Our garlic is cooking through, you can smell it. So we want to put just a little bit of uh, your favorite libation and steak to Galleon. It happens to be brandy or uh, cognac. Um, I think it would work fine with a lot of different, uh, like bourbon or cherry. We're going to get a little flame on this. It cooks out that fast. You can see you've kind of uh, taking all the flavor bits from those steaks and the onions and the mushrooms and kind of deglaze them off the pan. Now they're in the sauce. We're adding flavor. We're going to add just a touch of Worcestershire. Let that cook for just one second. Add a cup of cream. Sauce is coming together. Bring that up to a boil. Simmer. And you can see, you can smell the brandy, you can smell the mushrooms, you can smell all the onions. We're almost ready to plate. We've got some beautiful roasted squash right here. We're going to put those on the plate. Caramelization on those as well. Got our steaks that have been resting properly. I put those right on top. You can see our sauce has got some body to it. It's thickened up a little bit. Uh, and it's ready to go on. We're going to splash with a little bit of chopped parsley for good measure and some color. Get out our fancy spoon. You know, all of the chefs love our spoons. Give it a little stir. All right, so we got our bubbling sauce here. We're going to go right over to here to these beautiful fillets that we uh, sear over top of this butternut squash. Drizzle all over everything. Make sure you get some mushrooms on it. Might as well go heavy with the sauce, right? One little last pop of parsley for good measure, I guess. How about that? Simple, easy to cook at home. Come on down to uh, the Angus Barn. Purchase some of our steaks. You got your first demo, you know how to do it now.